conversation. Tina! Hi! How are you? I'm good, how are you? I am blessed. Okay, first and foremost, before we jump in, you are flexing hard with the diplomas in the background. Are those, <laughs> all those all yours? No, actually, I'm in my uh, husband's office. It's all of his. Oh, what's up to the husband? So then, that's amazing. So I, I just have to ask, what are the, what are the diplomas? What does your husband do? Um, he's a financial planner. So okay. the middle one is his Concordia um, diploma, and then the other ones have to do with uh, RBC. Okay. Let's go. All right, so shout out to your husband. <laughs> Yeah. Before we kind of jump in, let me just take a step back and kind of introduce you to my audience and do the same to yours. So Tina Garabedian is a phenomenal ice skater, an Olympian representing Armenia in the 2022 Olympics, as well as, if I'm not mistaken, a four-time world champion and a six-time Armenia champion. Am I correct when I said that? Um, world champion, no. I've participated at the world championships, but yeah, oh, Armenian sorry. champion, yes. Okay. Okay, so six-time Armenian championship, but you participated at the World Championships. Yes. All right, exactly. cool for that. And for, for me, for your audience, my name is Christopher Dedden. I'm a professional speaker and a peak performance business and life coach. So, Tina, let's just jump in first and foremost. Let me just find out how are you doing on this good Friday? Is everything going good on, in that regards? Yes, everything's really nice. I mean, weather's good today, so we'll probably go out later. 100%. Yeah, definitely enjoy it. And I know that you just came back from a couple of weeks that you were in France because you had a competition there. Talk to me a bit about that. How was that experience? Was it the first time you were skating in France? Uh, actually, yes. Um, I've been all over Europe for competitions, but it was the first time in France. And um, my husband and my parents were both there. So it was nice to, to be with them afterwards. And then we took like a two week vacation. But um, yeah, competition went really well. It was our first world since 2018. So it was a long time that I hadn't done that championships, which was, uh, which is honestly like a pretty big one. And um, we finished 14th. So that's, that's our, cool. our personal best. And uh, we were very happy with our performances and with the results. It was uh, a good way to end the season. Okay. First of all, congratulations on all of your success. Honestly, Thank being you. an Olympian is like just that in itself it demands hours and hours and hours of you hitting on your craft and honing that. And there's so many things I want to unpack and kind of geek out on. But let's start there. Talk to me about like, what is the effort that it takes to be an Olympian? At what point throughout your career, like, oh my God, this is actually a tangible goal. And then how did you decide to represent Armenia? So I gave you three questions, but I'm sure you're going to be eloquent enough to answer them, but let's, let's unpack that together. Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> I started skating when I was five. And, you know, back then that was, apparently I wrote it down on a paper that I wanted to be an Olympian someday, obviously not knowing what it was. And then it just became more of a possibility as time went on. And um, for representing Armenia, it was, when I started Ice Dance, my coaches asked me if I could have had citizenship for any other country. And I said, yeah, of course, Armenia. And it's just, um, I guess, a shortcut to getting where I am now, because there's obviously a lot of really good athletes in Canada. And um, yeah, that's how I started for Armenia. And obviously, it's a nice way to give back to the country and, and represent my country. So it, was, it worked out very well for, for everyone. Um, and for the effort, I think that um, it's been almost 20 years that I'm in the sport. So that just shows how, how much yeah. time I've put into um, getting there. And yeah, it's just, it's been a roller coaster. We've uh, gone through a lot of obstacles and a lot of challenges to get there. But I think at the end of the day, I, what kept me going is that it's, it's worth it. It's so satisfying for me. Um, to accomplish so many things over the yeah. years and, and learn from my experiences. So there was one okay. more question. I don't know what you... Know it, what it's, <laughs> it's good. I'll, I'll, I'll ramble on some other ones over there, but l let's translate that because now obviously you're a young adult and I'm saying young adult, that means you're 24 if I'm not mistaken, right? You yeah, mentioned, exactly. And you have already accomplished so much. What is the one thing, if you could say one thing, or what is the top thing that you're going to take from the experience that you have uh, as an Olympian, and I'm sure you still have a career ahead of you, 
that you're going to take it and translate it to the business world, to your personal life, to your career, and so on and so forth? What is that one thing that correlates like, oh, my God, I really have an advantage being an Olympian that I could learn from this in the real world? Um, I think determination, because like I said, so many obstacles that kind of bring you down. And just the fact that you want something so badly that it keeps you going is something that I've that has helped me and has gotten me where I want it. So I think that the fact that I never give up, I guess, is, wow. is something that will help me throughout the rest of my life. So I love that. I love that. Honestly, that's one thing that I resonate with immensely being dyslexic, which is a learning disability. I'm like, the only reason I succeed in life and in business is because I'm relentless. It really what mm -hmm. it is. Like, you're not good mm -hmm. enough. You're not this, you're not that. But mm -hmm. it's because if you just get up every single day and you continue at a certain point, you're going to get to a certain point if you have that focus towards that one particular goal. And when exactly. it comes to that goal of, like you said, at a young age, you wrote it down, like, hey, you know what? I want to be an Olympian without necessarily knowing it. And I do know like a lot of high performing athletes use visualization and manifestation to get those uh, results and the goals that they want. Are those some techniques that you do, especially on the visualization side and the manifesting? Like you imagine yourself doing the move with your partner to dance is before, how much in depth do you go on it? Like do you live it almost like it's reality in your mind when you go through that visualization? Um, definitely. That's something that's helped me to, especially when I'm in competition, because I mean, skating for me is very stressful as well. Like the, the fact that you're in front of everybody and competitions is like that one time that everybody's watching and you're judged and things like that. So visualization has really helped me to calm myself down and, and remember that I've done it so many times. And even in my head, like, I don't know, it just helps me make it less of a of an event and more mm -hmm. like practice. And that's how we've kind of succeeded this year is that our performances on the ice and off the ice, like we do a lot of off ice as well, have been so consistent that it just is it like it reduces the stress and you just go with the flow and you know, whatever happens happens. But it helps knowing that you have it down in your head, you have it down in your, like, it's just muscle memory at that point. You just perform and, and um, it's been helping us and it worked for us this year. So it was good. I mean, that is so correct. Cause if you just correlate it to astronauts, when they get rocketed up into space out of orbit, they have their heart rate around like 60, 70, which is legit when you're sleeping or when you're going on a very calm stroll, even though they're getting shot like through the rocket. And the reason why that is because they've practiced it so much within their mind, they've went through the process so much that when the moment comes, it's already been normalized for them. So I mm -hmm. guess that perception happens. But I want to ask mm -hmm. you one question because you did say that you kind of get nervous when these moments happen because like you said, your sport is very much like one moment. You've trained this whole time for this one moment and you have to do your spins, you have to do everything. But yeah. once you start skating, do you get in a state of flow that you kind of forget about that or that stress continues? No, exactly. Once the, once the music starts, um, you just stay in the moment. And, and like, especially at the Olympics, it was a crazy feeling because, I mean, at other competitions too, it's the same. But at the Olympics, I just was so enjoying every second that it finished. And I was like, wow, that passed by so fast. I wish it didn't. Um, but yeah, that's what you, you hope for as an athlete. You know, it's that it, it goes by quickly and it, it's easy and it's smooth and you enjoy the process. So um, yeah, once the music starts, we're, we, we focus on what we, ha what we have to do. And it just, it's just very uh, amusing and fun. I love that. I love that. And I'm going to ask you a question because I was really thinking about this and I don't even know what I would answer. And I'm going to tell you right now, being a diaspora, right? You're not born in Armenia. You're born in Montreal, I'm guessing? Montreal, yeah. Okay, beautiful. So being a diaspora, so uh, from Armenian descent, such as uh, I am as well, if imagine you were in a certain situation, like you said, that you were classified X, Y, and Z in Canada and you would be able to represent Canada or Armenia, very tough choice. And you were able to do either or. What would you choose? And I don't know if this is like a, like I'm putting you in a spot here, but I'm really interested <laughs> to see your thought pattern within this. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a proud Canadian. I love I love our country here. I'm I'm very happy. But I think um, representing Armenia has 
has had so many other benefits and I mean, I guess I, I wouldn't have known back then if I had to choose, but I think that Armenia is, you know, my home country yeah. and it's just a different feeling. And I'm, I'm so happy to be representing Armenia internationally and having people talk about the country and, you know, giving back, I guess. I, I mean, I'm spot on with what you just said, because for some people are like, how can you ask that? I'm like, I have to like just really <laughs> ask that question. Because if I'm, I'm looking at a different perspective, I'm exactly the same thing. I'm uber proud of being Canadian. But when somebody asks me what nationality you are, I say Armenian Canadian, to be yeah. quite honest. So yeah. to have that, like, uh, like we say in Armenian, Yira Queen, which is the three colors of Armenia on us, I'm sure it gives a different, like, vibe and all yeah. that stuff. So, and obviously, all Armenians, including myself, extremely proud of what you did in that regards. Uh, Tina, let's take it kind of back because you said that you started very young, four or five years old skating. And if I remember correctly, reading your bio, you have two other sisters and they started with you as well. So where are they, where are they at in the journey? Like, are you the only Olympian? How did like you continue? Did they not? Like, how has that conversation happened when you guys are all at the dinner table with the family? Um, yeah, so both of my sisters skated with me and um, they, um, they were in synchronized skating which is mm. a different discipline of skating where it's like 16 girls on the ice at the same time. And I was doing singles when I was younger, like where I was alone and doing jumps and stuff. And then I did one year with them in the team. So we were all three sisters in the same team. I didn't feel like I belonged and, you know, they've done it for all their lives. So they were actually Canadian champions in junior and novice. And they oh, wow. went to the world championships in junior as well, finished fifth. So they did a lot in synchro and then um, uh, retired afterwards. But yeah, we, it, it, was, it was fun because uh, we were all obviously in the same sport. So we knew a lot of things. We would compete and compare. And um, <sighs> it, it was nice growing up. But they obviously know a little bit more about the sport. So they've been supporting me throughout and... I love hearing their comments and feedback and um, yeah. I love that. I love that. So that honestly having two siblings doing the same sport, I'm sure pushes you. And there's a lot like in professional athletes that when there is that counterpart, like you said, you could push each other. You guys could talk and be like, Hey, do this, do that. Especially that you guys were in the same sport, but in a different discipline, I'm sure mm -hmm. they have certain expertise that you don't have and vice versa. So once you guys could swap like, that knowledge and information, it could only be just valuable for you and for them. And in that regard, what's, what's the next steps for you? Like, you, obviously, like I said, you're still a young athlete. I don't even know. I'm saying young athlete, you're 24, but what is young in figure skating ages? Like, are there people that skate in their thirties? What is your goal? Like what's, uh, what's next mm -hmm. for you? Yeah. So uh, we, my partner and I didn't really discuss it much, but I mean, I've uh, made a decision. I'm going to make an announcement later on, so you'll know then. But okay. um, for me, the biggest goal was to go to the Olympics. And uh, with that accomplished, I feel, I feel very happy and satisfied. So um, we'll see. But I'll definitely make an announcement soon enough. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, we'll just steal that thunder. I didn't know there was that announcement coming up, but I'll definitely stay tuned. But, yeah, once you hit that main goal and you're like, hey, that it was to go to the Olympics, uh, that, that's like, it's a huge, like, check off the, the box. And tell me, like, what was your time dedicated to this? Because now we're talking about, like, you know, your life, business, and all that stuff. Like, how much hours did you put per week or per day to get to the point to represent Armenia in the Olympics? Yeah, so I was um, going to Surpagop when I was younger. And uh, then I had to switch to a sports study because it wasn't enough hours. And mm. since then, I've been skating almost three to three and a half hours a day. And then um, like maybe three or four hours off ice working out uh, during the week like ballet or uh, ballroom dance or regular workouts, Pilates, things like that. So over the years, I think that that accounts to a lot of hours in the sport yeah. and on the ice. Okay, wow. So I did know that you guys probably practice <clears throat> off the ice, but I didn't know you guys do ballet, the, the whole Pilates, the dancing and all that stuff. Is that something that 
kind of gets developed within the time as well, or you were naturally a good dancer, or just kind of all came in together with. No, she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that person that the wedding dances first. No. <laughs> no, um, yeah, definitely uh, something that we've been working on over the years, and um, I think that you know, our actually our ballet teacher is Eva Ida Petian. She's the she was a, she was the dance teacher. Um, for Armenian dance at Surpala. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have an Armenian uh, an Armenian nearby when we were skating because she does everybody at our school. Um, but yeah, it's just part of uh, the process and part of um, us becoming better on the ice. So we have ballet and we also have um, a hip hop coach. So for some of us, like let's say me, <laughs> dancing is not as natural. So over the years, you know, I think I've, become more comfortable and um yeah I mean ha these are just tools that help us become better ice dancers yeah that that makes perfect sense and I'm glad that you know you had that Armenian dancing coach as well and you guys kind of jammed together from a very young age from Surpagwa as I was kind of thinking about this and like you know talk, thinking about the the skating world there are some crazy moves you guys do from like the triple flips to this to that the spins and there's high levels of, I'm guessing, fear involved, especially in the first couple of times that you do it of like, oh, my God, am I going to fall, break this, break that? The ice is probably not forgiving at all. It's a solid, solid, like, ground. And here's my question. I, I come from a background of playing soccer and started playing, like, you know, in, in those so the good levels in that regard. And one of my coaches used to say, for you to be the best goalie, you have to not be the smartest person on the team. And what he mean by that is like, you don't have to think when a ball is getting kicked, you have to throw yourself in front of it and get it on your face. He's like, the smarter you are, the more, the least of like a good goalie. Now I'm, I'm like, you want to that your face. Experience. so exactly. He's like, but you don't have to think now. This is my question to you. How do you go about doing those dangerous moves of like, oh my God, do you have that thought pattern? Like, oh my God, this is dangerous or X, Y, and Z before doing the move. Do you go like step up towards it? Like how does that process happen? Do you ever happen? Like there's a move like holy moly, you think about it and you're kind of afraid to execute on that move. Um, so what you're talking about, like the jumps and stuff, it's singles that do it. And us as ice dancers, we have, uh, we also have lift pairs yeah. is when the, the guy like lifts the girl overhead. Okay. Um, but our lifts are lower. So you can only have 70% of the girl's body above your head. So that's why ours are less scary. And for jumps and stuff, like obviously we can fall, but we don't have any jumps. Okay. So for us, it's not more of, I mean, if you're not used to lifts, but I've done it for so long that it's not as, as scary now. But um, yeah, I'm sure like those that do jumps are, you know, very uh, not afraid of, of falling and stuff, but we're not as, as crazy in that in that factor yeah, in that sense but i mean you're yeah. still getting put over a dude like 70 percent of your body while he's skating and like i mean there's still some yeah you I know much some risks. having my feet on the on the ice than <laughs> in the air <laughs> but um yeah it's not it's not that bad actually this year you know the twizzles that we do side by side it's like one of the harder um elements mm -hmm. Uh, we were close and my partner's foot like touched my knee. So I had to get stitches. That's, that's basically the worst that's happened. Okay. So that was, that was actually something I was thinking about as well. I'm like, these, these skates are like blades at a certain point. They have to cut through the ice and I'm sure you guys sharpen it right before going on as well. So you could really yeah. catch the ice properly. Yeah. So yeah, things like that do happen that you get uh, slits and cuts and so on. And yeah, we have, uh, we have scars all over the body, but it's part of being skaters. I think everybody, yeah. everybody has them. It's a part of the game in that regards. Yeah. And Tina, t tell me, so you were talking about your partner, you were talking about that when you were younger, you used to compete in your, by yourself. And then you did the, the, the team thing with your sisters. And then you yeah. went into partners. Was the partner that you went to the Olympics with somebody that you started at a very young age? Or how does it go like to match up with partners and kind of grow together? How does that choice happen? Uh, yeah, so you usually have tryouts at the beginning and then both partners agree that you want to skate together. But I started ice dancing at like an older age, which was 16. So I started later and I only had one partner before him. 
and Simon and I used to train at the same skating center. So it was just, he didn't have a partner and I stopped skating with my partner. So we just, um, it was a good match because we were both skating with the same coaches and kind of had a similar way of skating. But um, yeah, you just have tryout, tryouts and if it matches, then you just skate with the partner. So okay, that's, so it's, okay. that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really standard in that regard. Does yeah. chemistry play a role though? I mean, you're still dancing and I'm like, they give points for the emotion to this and that, I'm guessing as well. How do you kind of like that plays a role, right? Is that something you look into as well? Yeah, for sure. It was um, easier for us because we were uh, friends beforehand. So okay, cool. um, we kind of were familiar with each other and, and um, yeah, it worked out well. But uh, yeah, definitely that's something to look for because like you said, it's, it's important that you are believable on the ice and people can engage in your performance. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense, especially with the music, the cues and all that stuff. Like I said, you're kind of, it, it's essentially storytelling. It's like exactly. art storytelling. Yeah. And that's something I'm sure that you're, the, the, the person that directs it, the dance and all that stuff kind of talks about it. And talking about this whole Olympian world, who are some of your like idols or the people that you've looked up to in regards to the, the, the dancing uh, and the ice skating world? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I started ice dancing because of Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, who Let's are, go. yeah, who are obviously <laughs> Olympic champions for Canada, and um, yeah, it, they, I mean, her especially. I always look at girls because I want to learn from them. So her, I just, she is just always flawless on the ice. She's so beautiful. Um, Definitely one of my biggest idols in skating. And then also uh, I skate I skate at Montreal with the Ice Academy of Montreal, where all of the top skaters are. So like this year at the World Championships, the top three um, skaters, well, couples, also train with me. And I think it's really um, motivating to have such amazing skaters always on the ice with you because you learn so much from them every day and um, I really appreciate the fact that I was given that opportunity to skate with them so I think a lot of skaters but the first would be Tessa yeah I mean yeah I could <laughs> uh, definitely outside perspective but everybody knows Tessa uh, virtually I mean they, she's just great and like from my perception, like she personifies what it being an Olympian is just polite, well spoken, mm -hmm. hardworking, and so on. And is that somebody that you have connected with, like mentoring wise, or anything like in that regards? Because I'm sure there's people that were in the Olympics before you got there to kind of gave you the ropes or kind of gave you guidelines and support in that regards. Um, well, Tessa and Scott stopped skating in 2018, which was the mm -hmm. first year that we were in that school. So I saw them a okay. little bit that year, but not as much as everybody that was there at this Olympics. Okay. But okay. we were, so, yeah. um, I think, 11 teams from our school. So it was, it was nice to have friends there and um, people that you're used to training with. Nice. So... I mean, uh, uh, Tina, I feel like we could talk until tomorrow morning about this because it's truly something that like, it, it really intrigues me. Anything that has to do with high performance and for anybody to be at high level and anything towards business, entrepreneurship, uh, athletics, Olympians and all that demands a major amount of dedication, work ethic and structure, but not only for a season two, it's for legit a lifetime. And kind of like Malcolm Gladwell says in his book that uh, – uh, outlier that 10,000 hours to be a master is very predominant and I'm sure you've hit that 10,000 hours if not more so my question to you is one of the last ones over here what would you say for anybody that's a young athlete that wants to be an Olympian what is some like piece of advice that maybe you could get to tell them that it could resonate with them to really move forward and accomplish their dreams such as you did um yeah I think that uh Hard work and dedication is obviously what's going to get you there. There, and it's it's the fact that you never give up and you keep on getting up that's going to help you achieve your goals. But um, every story is different, and uh, I'm glad that this is mine because uh, that's what makes it special. So uh, just keep on going, keep your head up, and uh, I'm sure you'll you'll make it if you if you really want to. 
I love that. I love that. And like I said, it, it's beautiful, the story and all that stuff. And I want to kind of take a step back and ask you a question of, was there ever a moment that you're like, oh, kind of like, I'm done with this. I'm quitting. I'm retiring. And if so, what was the reason? And how did you obviously change your mind towards that? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's very difficult to admit. But uh, yes, there have been moments that, um, you know, when my biggest goal as I got older was the Olympics and last last Olympics 2018 we were first alternates so we barely missed a cut and then I was looking for another partner that didn't happen and then I found Simon and then the first year because of COVID world championships got cancelled the year after mm -hmm. which was last year we had the false positive case for Simon and then we didn't get to compete so a lot of like things kind of stopped me from getting my getting to my goal and I was not sure if this was a sign you know it's not gonna happen like maybe you should you should go in a different direction but I think ultimately like if I didn't try I couldn't live with myself so I obviously changed the mindset to stop thinking that it's all negative and look at the positive of what's happened so far and how far you've come and how strong you are to keep on going even though that it's mentally hard it's physically hard and it paid off at the end so you know if I hadn't done that um, I wouldn't be here and I'm so proud of myself and proud of um, the, my family and friends who have supported me through those hard times because they were hard <laughs> and yeah. um, definitely happy I continued and got to where I am today. I mean, Tina, I love these types of conversation in that regards because you did say it's kind of hard to admit this, but it's the thing that we need to talk about, especially when you look at somebody that's a certain level and it's like uh, you're admiring that, but at the same time, there's so much work in the back end. There's so much difficulty. There's so much doubt. There's so much insecurity that people need to know like, hey, this is what you're going to go through and it's normal. Everybody yeah. or anybody you look up to has gone through it and is going to go through it. So once you go through it, you understand like, okay, this is normal. It's a part of the process and there's this divine timing. And unfortunately for you, and I'm guessing a lot of the world as well in so many different regards, COVID hindered that from like mm -hmm. you said a, a negative uh, test for uh, your partner to pushing back the uh, the the worlds and so on and so forth and one last thing that i kind of wanted to allude to you kind of highlighted and this is like my world you talked about your mindset and i truly believe that 80 percent of success is psychology and 20 percent is mechanics your body already knows what you need to do from the dance moves to x y and z but if your mind is not in it you're just not going to succeed and you're not going to command your body to do the right moves. So how do you go about keeping that top performing mindset? Do you have a team that just talks about that? Do you have a psychologist? Do you just talk to what you mentioned, your friends, family, sisters, so on and so forth? Yeah, I definitely have a lot of support from my family, but I do, I did work with um, a sports psychology, well, a life coach that mm -hmm. has helped me um, find ways to, like I said, turn the negative into positive and just learn from everything and and um, yeah, just have a positive, positive mindset because that's what really an, an open one. That's what's helped me keep going and and improve in as a person and as an ice dancer. I love that. I love that because honestly, this is kind of like the way that kind of I explain. Like like I said, I'm a high performance coach, but me myself, I have eight coaches and mentors in different aspects in my life from my head coach to my speaking coach to my spiritual coach to my workout coach dietitian all that fun stuff and even though sometimes you know that knowledge you are the actor on stage and then there's co-actors but you, you need somebody that's in the director seat in the stands and looking at the whole picture which is mm -hmm. like you said that life coach for you or family and friends that be like hey tina did you think of this did you think of that which kind of helps you out anyways mm -hmm. last last little bit over here uh where is like the best place that people could connect with you or just reach out in any sense of the way, just kind of uh, open that up to you so people could connect if uh, need be. Um, yeah. My Instagram, I think is the easiest, which is just Tina Garabian and um, I'll be open to talk to anybody, answer any questions if they have any. So thank you so much. Tina. I mean, this was great. One last thing I want to ask, is there anything that I could do to support you and your goals in any shape or way? 
Um, I think that this interview was really helpful. I got a lot of insight from, from you as well. So thank you for conducting it. It was really, it was really fun. That is amazing. I mean, listen, uh, I'm a fan as the whole Armenia is, the Armenian community from Montreal, Laval, and all that stuff. So once again, truly from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. Thank you for Thank just you. representing us at such a high level. And just keep up your phenomenal work. This is just Thank the beginning you so for you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Speak to you soon. Bye, Bye. guys.